Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be turning this old rusty garage sale find axe into a survival axe. So stay tuned. This should be a good one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and get uh, get this axe put in this vise, and then I'm going to take my grinder with a uh, wire wire wheel and just start getting this rust off. So uh, bear with me; I'll probably I'll speed it up here. All right, that's clean enough. Uh, probably going to go ahead and put, uh, kind of fix the edge on this. I'm not trying to go for anything too fancy because I'm going to uh, pretty much paint everything on here. So, uh, like I said, I mean, this is just going to be a kind of like a survival axe, just, you know, just basically for working. So nothing too fancy. Okay, I just go, went ahead and put uh, this sanding bit on here. I'm just going to kind of fix the uh, grind on here and um, not really going, trying to sharpen it more than I'm just trying to kind of get the burrs off of it. Okay, now I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna try to grind this uh, the handle that's just sticking up over the uh, axe head here. Um, I think I'm just gonna cut this off and clean it up a little bit better than that. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and and uh, put some paint on the uh, head of this axe. And uh, that way it'll just kind of so I just want it to uh, be a lot more subdued and uh, it'll protect it from rust a little bit, a little bit better.
All right, I'm gonna go uh, hang this up and let it dry, and uh, and then we'll do a second coat. All right, so now the uh, head of the axe is double coated. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get it all masked off, and then we're gonna start working on the uh, handle here. All right. Okay, that uh, that about does it. So I'm gonna, I got one more piece right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on uh, this handle. Okay, so I just got a piece of uh, 180 grit. It doesn't really matter, 120, you probably do, uh, yeah, 100 or 180 or two, 200 even. So I'm just lightly gonna give this uh, handle a light sand. Uh, just get some of the old, uh, the old original finish that was on here. This is just going to help the uh, paint bond a little bit better to this, the surface of the handle. Also, it's going to make it a little smoother. All right, that should about do it. Um, there is already a hole drilled at the end bottom of this handle, but I'm gonna go ahead and bore this out just a little bit more. Um, and that way, um, you know, I can get a lanyard in there or if I want to, I can just hang it up on a nail. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bore this hole out a little bit more. Okay. It's always a good idea when you're boring a hole through um, hard wood like this to just try to go as slow as you can. It's just going to minimize minimize the uh, splintering around the hole. And then just to make sure that you have a nice straight hole. You, you never want to just go all the way through. Just come back to the other side and uh, connect it this way. So that's a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to paint this axe handle with um, some Rust-Oleum. This is like a, uh, this is a product line they have. This is the Deep Forest Green and it's just a, a, a flat, a flat camo, camo color. So 
they, it pretty much bonds to everything because it's flat and it, because it's a solvent base. So there's no need to uh, prime this handle. So now I'm going to just go ahead and put this uh, back in the vise and then paint that the end of the axe here. Try to get it in that lanyard hole. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then uh, come back and do a second coat. And uh, then I'll, I'll go to the next step. All right, that should about do it. So like I said, this is a really good product. It sticks to just about everything I painted uh, uh, rifles with it. I painted my fishing boat with it. So yeah, it's a really good strong pro product and uh, you'd be surprised like how well it bonds. Okay, so now that the uh, second coat and the handle has thoroughly dried, what I thought I would do is go ahead and give this axe a uh, just a bit more of a survival feature. So I'm gonna take this fire steel here and I'm going to put it on the handle and I'm just gonna take my pencil, try to get this really straight and just trace this like that. Give it, kind of get a sense where this is gonna go. All right, and I don't know if you can see that, but um, basically I just traced out the fire steel here and I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm gonna carve this out just a little bit so I can seat this fire steel inside this handle. And then I'm gonna probably put a little dab of hot glue just to secure it. And then I'm gonna take some paracord and I'm gonna wrap paracord uh, probably about down to about here on the handle and um, that way you got paracord, you got a fire steel, and the paracord kind of acts as like a, um, a softening to the axe here. So uh, it just makes it a little easier to carry. Plus, if you, if you miss your, you know, splitting your wood, um, it kind of acts as kind of like a uh, bumper to the, um, to the axe handle so you don't end up marring up your axe handle. So, all right, so I'm going to go get the Dremel and, uh, and start boring this out. Okay, so I have my Dremel set up here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a very fine little boring bit right there. Um, so I'm going to start out with this one and just to kind of fine tune outline my shape. And then I'll probably come back with one of these, um, these bigger uh, shanks. This is like a 1 8, uh, well, not a 1 8, it's a uh, number 107 um, Dremel bit. So it just kind of goes in, bores out the... Uh, the uh, the bulk of it so I'm just gonna kind of get this Dremel started slowly I'm just gonna very carefully start boring this outline out
Okay, so I got the uh, bigger bit on here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start working on uh, cutting out the field here. Okay, so I'm just about done here. I'm, uh, I thought I'd just kind of bore out a tiny little spot right here. Um, and then that way, when I glue in my fire steel, I'll just have a little area where I can kind of um, put a little knife in there and, and pry this fire steel out. So I'm just going to kind of bore out just a little groove right here. All right, that'll about do it. I'm just going to get some sandpaper and clean this up a little bit and then uh, give it a coat of paint and then glue in this fire steel. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a quick little dry fit here. That actually fits pretty snug in there. It's almost so tight in there that I hardly need glue, but I'm going to glue, put some glue in there just uh, just for good measure and make sure that, you know, when I'm chopping wood, this thing doesn't fall out. Even though I'm going to have a uh, paracord wrapped around here, I'm just going to kind of give it some extra security. You know, as you can see, I only probably bored down maybe oh I don't know an eighth of an inch at the most and uh, so it didn't I didn't want to go too deep and compromise the integrity of the uh, handle um, so uh, it just uh, it's just enough to kind of give it a little place for the fire steel to, to sit in there nice so all right I'm gonna go ahead and, and paint this and then glue that fire steel in Okay, so the paint's already dried here, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this glue gun going. I already had it heating up, so I am uh, I have a feeling this glue's going to want to dry really quick because it's freezing cold in here, as usual. So, yeah, I'm probably not going to put too much. So like I said, I, I just want it to... Kind of be secure. So I'm just going to put two small dots. I think that should be enough. So the the uh, paracord is going to hold this in um, for the rest of the way. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get the paracord going. So basically, I chose this color, kind of a like a camouflage pattern here. So I just thought it kind of complement the colors here and then um, I think I'll do is probably start wrapping this probably bring the cord in here I'm probably gonna start by just giving a little bit of hot glue right there and then Putting our paracord on there. That'll be the starting point there. I'm going to let that dry. And then I'll start wrapping wrapping it. All right, but before I kind of I just thought about it, but before I start wrapping this paracord, because I want to get it nice and tight to this handle, I'm going to go ahead and take the, the tape off of here. And, uh, and then that way, 
I can see what it looks like <laughs> and uh, also get the paracord wrapped around here. All right, I did quite a tape job here. All right, okay, so there it is. I got all the tape off. Turned out pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping this paracord. What I think I'm gonna do is probably put this, uh, put the ax back in the vise, kind of make this easier on myself. Okay, now I got the ax back in the vise. I'm just gonna go ahead and start wrapping this paracord. And I'm going to uh, just make sure I can do it as tightly as possible. So I do have a, a rag here to kind of keep the teeth of the vise from uh, barring up the uh, handle. So, but like I said, I mean, this is, it's just going to be, a working axe uh, don't need to make it too fancy here you know it's just in the end of the day it's just a tool not sure if I'm gonna do two uh, layers of cord here I might we'll see what happens when I when I get to the end here but I might come back and do a, a another another go around that way it's just going to make it just gives me more cordage it's going to make the keep the sapphire steel more secure in here and it's also going to give more padding um, on this part so another thing i think i might do right now is i'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue at the uh halfway point here and just kind of lock it in this is just going to help with the uh just keep it from un unraveling when i'm while i'm using it so i'll probably do that periodically just keep this paracord tighter on this handle Okay, so I'm at the end here. I'm going to go ahead, probably put another little dollop of glue there, and then start coming back and doing my, my second pass. Okay, so I've reached the end here, and I'm going to just going to go ahead and cut this and give me some uh, length there. I put a big, uh, a big gob of um, or a big line of the uh, hot glue over here on the last two layers or the last two um, swipes I made around here. Just trying to figure out a way to kind of finish this uh, to make sure that that doesn't come out. I think what I'll do is just cut it tight and then just load this up with glue, hot glue right here. And uh, I think that will kind of hold this all in place. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so now that I've given this 
time to dry that glue. I'm just going to take this, my razor, my razor knife. Let me put my glasses on. And uh, I'm going to just try to make a nice clean cut right there. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my lighter and burn that real good. All right, and then just wipe that down. All right, just melted it on the back there. That plus the glue, I got a whole bunch of glue going on the back there, so I don't think that's going anywhere. But, yeah, that, that proved to be a little tougher than I thought, just kind of making, you keeping all this paracord nice and tight and even. That was a little tricky, but, uh, yeah, I think that'll hold on there well. And it covered up the fire steel really nice, so. Okay, yeah, so now all going. I have left to do is just I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, a lanyard on here and call this puppy done. So nothing, nothing too much. Just kind of give it a little lanyard like that. And then uh, I'm going to come back with my lighter. Just burn these edges, burn these ends so they don't fray, fray out and come apart. All right, that'll about do it. Okay, so here it is, all finished. This is the final finished look here. Hopefully, my camera's picking that up. I think it turned out really nice. Okay, so like I was saying, um, I thought I'd just kind of keep this axe right on the front of my ATV here in the uh, rifle rack. I'll probably just put a, um, like a bungee strap right here to keep this from popping out. But yeah, if you guys have any old axes laying around and you're not using, this is just a uh, great little thing that you can do and just kind of make the axe a little bit more meaningful and a little bit more useful. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to please subscribe to my channel and uh, thumbs up the video. All right, you guys, until the next one, stay prepared.